Don't take mine. Don't take mine. Don't take no credit card to ride this train. Feel the power of love. Feel the power of love. You feel the power of love. Feel the power of love. Got everything here, man. My goodness. Power of love, ladies and gentlemen. What's up, folks, ladies and gentlemen? It is Sunday, August 25th, 2024. We're at the Bitcoin block height of 858,438. <clears throat> Tick tock, next block. Guys, listen, this this place, I'm not showing this to you to brag. This is the most, most spectacular place I've ever been to, man. I mean, this thing's got everything. It's got this little pond down here with the, with the duckies and the swans and you know, everything else. It's got a lazy riverbank. <clears throat> you can go around the pool. They got the pool, they got the palm trees, they got the mountains in the back. And like I said, out front, they got the golf courses. Um, incredible, man. Incredible. Sometimes you just gotta soak in life, man, and, and get out of your comfort zone and, and go on some vacations. And uh, let me go somewhere quiet, hold on. And go on some vacations, man, and and, and get out of, uh, get, out of the, get out of the rut you're in. You know what I mean? Again, I, I love me some Bitcoin. I love me some, uh, <clears throat> you know, talking about politics and everything else. But at the end of the day, uh, you got to enjoy your life, you know. And even though I don't like the process of going on vacation, to be honest, um, once I get here, I'm fine because I hate going on planes. But like I said, we got we got everything out here. This is this is Palm Springs, California, India, California. You got the golf courses, the mountains. The, I mean, it's just again, I've been to a lot of places, but I've never been to a place like this. This is absolutely uh, amazing. Get out and go on vacation. Anyways, guys, I hope you're doing well. Um, it's a Sunday. We're just chilling, chilling out today. But I, I wanted to, uh, you know, because when I take a shower, uh, which is not that often, <laughs> but when I do take a shower, because I, I, uh, I indulge in a lot of uh, content and I'm always constantly learning or reading or listening to something or something, but... Every once in a while, when I take a shower, um, you know how you get in there, you get it's just quiet and you, uh, you get your thoughts to yourself. And I was thinking about our system and what's going on today and on the timeline that we're on, we're on now. And, uh, you know, I, I look at the, the debt clock a lot. You know, the debt clock, I think it's debtclock.org. And I look at all those numbers and I'm learning about what each number means and everything else. And when you look and you see that uh, the government is only taking only <laughs> taking in five trillion versus about six point eight trillion, almost six point nine trillion, um, you know, we're spending six point nine trillion versus taking in five trillion. Uh, that's a one point nine trillion deficit, right? And I talked about this the other day about keeping a uh, a balance a balanced budget, right? And how do they do it? Well, the government and the Fed work together because trust me, the federal government. There's nothing federal, uh, the Federal Reserve, there's nothing reserved in there and there's nothing federal about it. And they're not part of the government. They're two separate entities. <clears throat> and what the federal government does is they print money. And what the government does is they borrow money. And government also spends a lot. How are you? How are you doing? Good. And what they do is they, they work in tandem and they do a lot of evil stuff, right? And they devalue our money and our currency, which is your energy. That's what they do. And uh, <clears throat> it's theft, man, it's theft. And for them to be borrowing this amount of money and printing this amount of money, because <laughs> they borrow, the government, they borrow and print <clears throat> so they can overspend and also for they can pay off the massive interest on the debt right if you had a credit card loan uh let's say you took out money or cash on, on your credit card 
<clears throat> you know how high the interest payments are. Well, this, this is what's going on with the federal government. They are paying over a trillion dollars just in, or is it a hundred trillion? I gotta look at it again. Maybe it's a hundred trillion. Yeah, it's a hundred trillion, I believe, in interest, interest, interest on the debt. And that's, that's crazy, man. That's crazy. It might be a trillion, so double, I'll double check that you guys double check that for me, fact check. But anyway, it's a lot of money, right? <clears throat> and you know, we, we spend on a lot of different things, Medicare, um, Social Security and stuff like that. And speaking of Medicare, um, Kamala Harris doesn't, doesn't uh, want you to have individual, uh, <laughs> individual private uh, medical insurance. They want, she wants Medicare for all. And uh, that's, that's, she's a communist, man. She's a communist for several reasons. She wants to do the uh, quote unquote, stopping the price gouging, price gauging, she said, AKA price controls. And you, you just can't do that in the government. And I'll get into that in a second. But she wants uh, Medicare for all because she wants the government to take care of you. She says, oh, forget all that. Forget the co-pays because she'll say all the bad things that happen with your own personal uh, Medicare or med medical insurance that you have. She'll say all the bad reasons. And, and, and there are some bad ones out there. And they are high and the premiums are high sometimes. But the problem is you should be able to choose what you want. Remember my body, my choice. Remember that? <laughs> Until it comes to the government control. Because they pretend like they're not... Uh, <laughs> big government and stuff like that. She also pretends she's not a, she's not a communist, <clears throat> but she doesn't want you to have individual insurance, which if you have a good insurance policy, she's going to take that away from you and less control for you and less control of the markets and the individual capitalism of the markets and more control of the government. And again, she also wants to do price controls, which doesn't work. Richard Nixon tried this in the early seventies. It didn't work. Do you remember if you're old enough or heard, had your parents tell you, saw you saw it on TV. Do you remember those big, long gas lines they used to have back in the early 70s? Well, the reason they did that is because gas was really, really low at the time, and there was a quote-unquote shortage <clears throat> of it. And the reason why it was a shortage is because a lot of uh, companies weren't selling the gas back to the oil companies or the, the gas stations because they were being price controlled and they had no incentives on the, su the supply and demand aspects of the free market and, and of oil. So if you have oil set at a certain price and it costs you more money to sell at that set price, that ceiling that the government puts on it, then you're not going to sell. Do you remember the, 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 did you ever hear about the situation with the, with the, the, the chickens or the chicks back in the seventies, the baby chickens, the chicks that were drowned by the farmers? It was, it was horrendous and they killed them and drowned them because it cost them more to sell these chicks than it would uh, to keep them. So they just killed them. It cost more to sell them because they were paying more to keep them and up, you know, had the upkeep of them and stuff like that. So when you do price controls, uh, <laughs> you're, you're, you're disrupting the, the equilibrium or the one-on-one of, of capitalism and that's supply and demand. You know, <clears throat> if, if there was, if there was a, a cap, if the government came and said, hey, we're going to we're going to cap you at this at, for, a let's just say, a, a grocery store or something. Well, the price is going to be stuck there. And guess what's happening? What's going to happen? Everybody's going to run in there and clear off the shelves <clears throat> because they know that's the set price. And they're going to clear off the shelf because they know they can't they can't go any higher based on the supply demand dem uh, dynamics that are natural in a, in a free market. And what's going to happen? They're going to run out of stuff. And because of the, the supply is down. Uh, they can't <clears throat> they can't bring up the the price, and it's going to mess everything up. So it's going to it's going to cause black markets and people selling stuff on the streets and people going to be lacking and stuff like that. I mean, look at think about uh, when you go to a Sam's Club or a BJ's or a Costco's or something, right? Why are those lines at these uh, at these big box stores? Why are the lines for the gas so so long? It's because they're a little bit cheaper, right? So. When you do stand in those long lines to get the gas, just like it was in the 70s, because it's cheaper, the reason they do that is because they're spending less money, but the problem is they're losing their time because they're spending 45 minutes or an hour in a line to save 10 cents a gallon. But this is just basic stuff, and they, in the, uh, in the administration, uh, definitely pretend like it's not bad, 
Everybody says Kamala Harris is stupid and she doesn't understand this, that, and the third. Kamala Harris is not running anything. Okay, she's just not. And it's the it's the it's the people above her that want us to be in a communist system without telling you it's a communist system, right? They have to paint Donald Trump as a bad guy, <clears throat> create an enemy, lie about him in the media, and then the journalists who are propagandists and uh, you know they're just propagandists and they work for the uh, for the. I don't want to say the Democrats because it's not just the Democrats; it's, it's some some Republicans too. They work for the machine, okay? Because you saw all those quote unquote Republicans, rhinos, aka uh, traitors and uh, propagandists as well. They came out against Trump. But when you have a media that comes out and anybody that's pro America or pro Trump comes out and and has a has a uh, let's just say they had an interview with one of the uh, propagandists on on CNN or MSNBC or ABC or PBS or whatever. What do they end up doing with somebody? It's normally a Republican. I mean, every once in a while, it's a Democrat, like maybe a Tulsi Gabbard or somebody that's against the machine. It's an anti-establishment person. What ended up happen, happening? Well, they'll talk bad about Trump and say, well, why did, why did Trump say this? And why did Trump say that? And then the person that's on, uh, on air getting, getting uh, interviewed will state some statements. And next thing you know, they're having a debate and going back and forth with each other. And the propagandist is talking bad about Trump and trying to make that person look bad but at the same time playing defense for Kamala Harris and the administration. And that's not journalists. That's not journalism, guys. That's, again, that's propaganda. And that's, you know, if they did actually did their job, these propagandists, um, <laughs> Kamala Harris wouldn't stand a chance. But the problem is people that watch this stuff don't even understand what they're watching. They also don't know what uh, communism is, the difference between communism and capitalism, because if they did, they would definitely not vote for Kamala Harris. <clears throat> if the media would cover her or her uh, fair and say, well, hey, you know, Kamala, you said this in the 2019 uh, run up to the 2020 election when you were a far leftist, you were ultra, ultra progressive. You know, you had a lot of socialist, communist, uh, you know, policies that you were trying to put out there. Uh, and then also the border was wide open and actually not talk junk about her, but just tell the truth about her and say this on the mainstream media instead of playing defense for her, um, let's just say the uh, poll numbers would be a lot different. But even with that said, even with Trump, again, Trump's not perfect, but even with Trump having everything against him, he has everything against him, mind you, because Fox News is with him to a certain extent, but trust me, Fox News is establishment too. They have some pretty good reporters and they do tell the truth here and there, but for those of you guys that watch Fox News, let's just say they leave out a lot of stuff and Trump is not their favorite guy, I'm telling you that. Uh, if Nikki Haley popped up, they would they would be with Nikki Haley too. Again, you have establishment Republican and Democrats that want us to uh, keep a forever war going. And I don't care what side you're on. That's not good, man, to have a war, <clears throat> especially having a war during communism, price controls, and uh, absolute totalitarianism or totalitarianism, totalitarianism <laughs> going against the going against the nation. So it's uh. It's crazy what's going on. Kamala Harris, uh, again, is just a puppet. She's just a face. And she doesn't have to go out here. And um, and she knows it. She doesn't have to do any interviews. She doesn't have to do one press conference. Because, again, she's practicing for it. She's just a puppet. She's an empty suit. And answer any questions because she knows the mainstream media does that for her. For her. They actually literally answer questions for her and Tim Waltz. They say things that she's supposed to be defending. <clears throat> and they pr play... Uh, you know, the good guy, bad guy thing that Kamala Harris is good character and Trump's the bad guy and Oprah Winfrey's coming out here lying and everything else. Oprah Winfrey used to love Donald Trump, used to absolutely love him, loved him. Oprah Winfrey, uh, not Oprah Winfrey, uh, Whoopi Goldberg and The View, they all loved Donald Trump. Everybody loved Donald Trump. Chuck Schumer, Nancy Pelosi, all of them loved, loved him until he came down an escalator. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, he's a sexist, a racist, misogynist and he's evil <laughs> again man he is the stick that's hitting that beehive so let me know what you guys think in the comment section below man and again guys despite all this stuff we know that the, the, the budget is not really balanced it's balanced through uh borrowing and and printing and uh it's a, it's a messed up system it's a it's a totally ass backwards uh system that that goes against us but there's one system <clears throat> that's the complete opposite of that not only is it the complete opposite of that, but it's 
doesn't work against us, excuse me, like the other one does. The other one works against us and is for the evil people in the government. The other system is for us. It's of the people, for the people, and by the people. And uh, it's a clean system. It's a, it's a fair, righteous, righteous system. It's a system that cannot be cheated. You can't borrow and print this money. <laughs> it's the hardest money in the world. It's the most honest money in the world. It's the most uncorruptible money in the world, unconfiscatable money in the world. And it's the only thing that not only is going to save us from this, these, these evil politician and the politics and the communism and things that's coming out, but it's also going to save us from that deathly, deathly uh, pain that everybody's feeling, and that's inflation. And there's only one way to do that. And I think, and I hope and pray, you guys already know what it is. It's the best way to save. And for me, the only way to save. And that's Bitcoin. I love each and every one of you, and I'll talk to you soon. Peace and love, guys.